There's a couple words I'd like to share today. The well, first word is called unexplainable. Some things we just cannot explain. Sometimes we ask God why, and there's no explanation, so we believe in the unexplainable. We hold on to the unexplainable, and we leave out the undeniable, the undeniable truth of what God wants to do. Sometimes we want the undeniable. Sometimes we see God do things with us, and it's undeniable that God is in your life. But something happens, and we look at the unexplainable, and we hold on to that unexplainable. Maybe somebody said something to you, or something happened within your life, and you just don't understand it. You cannot explain it, and you hold on to it. Sometimes our defining moments are wrapped up in these two words. A defining moment of time, a truth that you knew, a truth we know, or a truth we don't know yet. And somehow that blinding light of truth comes into your heart and into your life, and you have to do something with it. You could either go back into the cave, into the darkness, and live in what you know, or you can stand out in that shimmering bright light of truth and let God do something great within your life. In John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, if you live in my word, if you rest in my word, if you keep my word, you are my disciples indeed. And then you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You can't just read over it. You can't just hope it exists. When we abide in Christ, that bright light of truth will come on us, and then we can start seeing what God wants to do within our life. We have to stay in that light. We can't go back into the darkness. When we go back in the darkness and we'll do and understand what we've always known. And there's times where God wants to stretch us. And sometimes we can't explain. There's times we have no explanation of what takes place within our life. We do have to trust in Jesus within our life. You don't need to have all your questions answered before you can believe in someone or something. Sometimes if somebody says, I'm gonna ask every question, and, and as soon as somebody can answer every one of my questions, I'll put my faith in God. And God says, listen, faith, you're not gonna have all of your questions answered. You have to have faith in me. You have to undeniably faith in me until I understand everything. I'm not gonna believe anything is not the proper answer. If you focus on the unexplainable, and our life is focused on what I do not know. We are laser focused on the things I don't know. We will lose sight on what God wants you to know. And when we look at what God has done within our own life, what God has done within your life, when you have hit that brick wall or that semicolon and you have no idea what's next, what do you do? Oh, you can go to your college professor and they can deny Christ and they think the Bible is, 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 is just a fairy tale book. But that's not what you believe. You believe that Jesus is the son of the living God. What do we do with what's true? We can look at the unexplainable all day long. Why this took place and how that took place. Why God allowed that or why God did this. And you can look at that and you can wonder. You can wonder why our parents got divorced. You can wonder why your child was sick and why your brother died. You can look at that and you can get mad at God and say why. And those things are unexplainable. And we can live in unexplainable. A lot of us live in that unexplainable place. A lot of us get mad at God and we say, I don't understand. I don't have the answers. And I am not going to follow after somebody I do not know. But then we have to look at the undeniable. What did Jesus do? When the unexplainable took place, we got upset. We fell on our knees before God and said, God, I need you. And God comes to your rescue and he helps you. When we get back up, we start resting for some time in the undeniable because I needed God. But then something takes place. The questions happen. Why? And in our finite minds, we do not have the answers to the why. So we go into the unthinkable unexplainable, unimaginable. 
instead of holding on to the undeniable, the undeniable truth that God loves you. That is where we have to be as a family. Undeniable knows that Jesus loves me just like the song, I was blind but now I see. One of the greatest chapters in the Bible about that explanation is found in John chapter 9. John chapter 9 is a story of a young man that was blind from birth. Now, get a picture of this. Let's say he's 22, 23 years of age. And he was blind from birth. A blind beggar at the gate all of his entire life. He never played a game. He never played sports. He never walked. He had no friends. He was a beggar. He had no life. Can you imagine his parents bringing him home from the hospital at the day? Holding him, knowing that he could not see. Knowing the dreams and the aspirations they had for him are gone. Nothing about this boy would ever be what the parents desired. They were saying, why? Why? Why my child? Why didn't you take somebody else's eyesight? Why is it my child? And I could even imagine the parents somewhat getting upset because they had no answers. They had no answers. And without answers, it's just unexplainable. John chapter 9. I'm just going to dissect this and read a couple scriptures and tell you what it's about and just go with the flow here a little bit. Now, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? The misconception of the day, and even somewhat of today, that God punishes my kids God punishes me because of my sin. Who sinned, this man or his parents? Sometimes we look at uh, something bad is going to happen. The karma, God is going to punish you for what somebody else did for you. Or your kids are going to have to suffer for what you have done. Listen to what Jesus said here. And Jesus said, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that so that works of God should be revealed in him. Did you get that? So God, sometimes uh, things happen, sometimes circumstances, sometimes issues take place only for God to show up. He may not heal your life, but he is going to bring things within your life so the glory of God can be revealed within your life. Don't start looking at, did he sin or did she sin? Don't look at what took place. What did God do? And when we start looking in our life, and the unimaginable, unexplainable. And then when God shows up, we can see the undeniable that God wanted something to take place so God can be glorified, so God can win. Nobody sinned. God wants to do something with his life. It may not be like everybody else, but in the midst of our tragedies, in the midst of our failures, in the midst of our disease, in the midst of our addictions, in the midst of our pain, can God work through you? Can God work in you? That's what's undeniable. Because we could talk about all the stories, but all the stories are just stories of our life, and we all have stories but when you're sitting in the chair of life, is it unexplainable? Or can you sit there and say, it's undeniable. Jesus changed my life. You know, church is church. We can sing songs and we can worship God. But when it comes down to the undeniable, each and every one of us, we can either say, it's unexplainable. I don't, I don't get it. I'm mad at God. I'm mad at the world. Nobody cares. Or we can fall on our face before God and say, Lord, I don't understand. But I know that you're with me. And that is undeniable. That peace and that forgiveness and that grace that you have given to me is wonderful. So in verse 4, Jesus gives his disciples a little teaching time. 
verses 4 and 5, it says, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Jesus his disciples are sitting there and say, he said, he said hey, what's going on here? And, and Jesus said, time out, guys. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do, and I'm going to show you what I do, and then you're not going to believe what I'm going to do. Listen, as I'm here for these three and a half years, I am the light of the world. I'm God in the flesh. I am the light. There's going to be a time that I'm going to be in heaven, and you're going to be by yourself, and there's going to be darkness. There's going to be confusion, but while I'm here, I want to show you that you can trust in me. I want to show you that nothing takes place that I'm not in control of. This is important. When I am with you, it's day, but when I leave you, the darkness may be bad, but I am the light of the world. And they're saying, what? What are, you, what are you talking about? You're the light of the world. Rome is the light of the world. Greek philosophy is the light of the world. Self-empowerment is the illusion of the world. And Jesus says, I, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. When you look at what I can do, they're thinking, this dude's arrogant. This dude... He, he, he's coming into a city and he sees a blind guy and, and, and now he starts talking about the light of the world. He starts thinking about what he could do. I love the story about the international business machines. Tom Watson was making his new company and he said, he told his wife, he said, he said, he said, he said I'm going to start international business machines. And she said, international business machines out of your garage? Why don't you just say local business machines? And it went on after that first year to now what we know as IBM. Out of his garage. He had the idea of international, not local. And Jesus said, guys, listen, what I'm going to teach you, you have to take over and you have to take it to the world. You can't talk about what's unexplainable. What you have to go is you have to be un." deniable. In verse 6, when he had said these things, in other words, when he had said these things, take what I have said, and now I'm going to apply what I said. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. <laughs> Can you imagine what the beggar was saying? Dude, come on now. Okay, it, just touch my eyes. Nope. He got on the ground and he made spit. He made mud. He made a creation. This is a creative miracle. A man that was born blind put mud over his eyes. He's never seen Jesus. He has heard his voice, but he's never seen him. And Jesus says, go to the pool of Siloam and wash your eyes. Verse 7, he said to him, go wash your eyes in the pool of Shalom, which was translated sent. So he went and washed and came back. What? Seeing. Undeniable. Unbelievable. For 22 years, the guy was blind. He encounters Jesus. How many times in those 22 years, sitting at that beggar's gate, do you think he was mad? Why am I here? Heard the kids playing. Talked about all the ball players. Talked about all the communicators. Sitting at the temple gate, mad. I am blind. I am worthless. I can't make any money. I have to sit here and beg. Everybody laughs at me. Everybody makes fun of me. I am worthless. Until Jesus shows up in his life. When Jesus shows up in his life, now... He can see. And this is where the, the fun starts in the story. Verse 8. Therefore the neighbors and those who previously had seen him, that he was blind, said, Is not this who is at the gate begging? Some said this is he. Others said it looks like him. It looks like him. He said, I am he. Well, what do you mean? I was once blind, now I see. You don't even know it's me. I am blind, but now I can see. How, what are you saying? It looks like him. What are you saying that? 
tells me that a lot of people didn't just sit there and talk to the outcast. It's unexplainable. Why would you talk to somebody like that? Why would you talk to somebody that was an outcast? Why would you spend time? He can't do anything for you. It's unexplainable. Just walk by him. Throw a couple pennies his way. So now this man, who was blind for years, is healed. And they started arguing if he can even be the same man that was begging at the gate just a few days ago. All because they didn't understand or they could not explain. They started arguing. They started fighting. They started da da doubting what was truly undeniable. Therefore they said to him, how were your eyes opened? The guy was thinking, who cares? Who cares how? Who cares? If I had a divine miracle, my boy that's 22 is blind and now he sees, I'm, I'm going to worship him. I'm going I'm to throw him a party. I'm going to give him some cake, some ice cream. I, we're partying. I don't care how. All I know is it is. He is healed. It is undeniable. My boy was a beggar at the gate blind. And somebody came into his life and touched him. And now he can see. I don't know why. I don't understand. In verse 11, he answered and said, A man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to the pool of Shalom and wash. So I went and washed and received sight. But who cares? Who cares how? Who cares what I did? All I know is I can see. I can see for the first time. I can see the sky. I can see your face. I can see. I had no idea of concept of colors. I can see. I'm happy. But then here's what they cared about. Then they said to him, where is he? He's still thinking, who cares where he is? Why do you need to know where he is? Who cares? It's about me. It's undeniable. I was blind. It's undeniable. I can see. Can I explain it? It's unexplainable. But I have to undeniably say it took place. He said, I don't know. I do not know. I don't know where he is. I don't know how he did it. All I know is that I can see. So the neighborhood started arguing. The normal people started arguing. How did this take place? Why, why did it take place? Who did it? But they weren't satisfied with the answers. So they went to the temple. The tension starts here. In verse 13. They brought him, who formerly was blind, to the Pharisees. Now it was on the Sabbath when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also asked him again how he had received his sight. Do you know the key word there? It was on the Sabbath day. It was on the Sabbath day, and you can't do anything on the Sabbath day. But I'm sure the boys, are you serious? I've told this story two, three times. Now I've got to tell you again. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Therefore, some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. Undeniable that Jesus healed the blind man. Unexplainable how they could not see that and that was blinded, that even though he did the good thing, he did not follow after their thing. Let me tell you what he's saying. The Sabbath, clearly this is not man. This is not for God. This has to be man. They had God in a box. What would they do? See, the Sabbath was holy. What they are saying is they know everything that God would do. They know what God wants. They know what God would ever do. 
They had no ability to explain why a man from God would go outside of their little box and do something undeniable for somebody that's in need. They said it couldn't be done. Would never be done. He can't be from God if he would do something like this on God's day. On God's day. What the Pharisees are saying is they know everything. They know what God wants, what God would do, and how God would do it. There would be no question. If you have a question about God, come talk to me. If you want to know what God would do in any circumstance, come talk to me. I know everything about God. And God would never do something like that for somebody like that. He must not have been from God. They couldn't explain it, couldn't understand it, so they refused to believe it. Others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was a division among them. He may not have done it on the Sabbath. He could do it on the Sabbath. He, why would he do something good? Because it's a creative miracle. He has to be of God. So even in the Pharisees, there's a division. Could he have actually been from God? Could he do these things? Division between the Jews about Jesus was right in front of them. But here's what Jesus says. They said to the blind man, what do you say about him? Because he opened your eyes. He said, he's a prophet. I don't know. I don't know if he was a man of God. I don't know if he was a sinner. All I know, if he's a prophet, all I know, he was sent from God. And all I know is for 22 years, I sat at the gate and begged. But now, I see. I just know I can see. I can't explain it, but I can't deny it either. I just know I can see. Sometimes we get so focused on the unexplainable, we don't focus on the undeniable. Sometimes we get so focused on what somebody thinks, we lose sight of what God wants. Sometimes the undeniable is right in front of us, but we have so many questions about the unexplainable, the undeniable falls apart. Verse 18, but the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called his parents of him who had received his sight. Since the beggar couldn't explain it, they couldn't understand it, so it must not be true, but certainly he could see. So what they do? They asked him saying, is this your son? Is this your son? The parents that grieved for 22 years, they couldn't, couldn't have their child because he was blind. Who you say was born blind. Then how does he see? They didn't know, and they didn't care. They had been heartbroken for their son was born, and now he, is, now he cannot see. They are thrilled that he can see today. They didn't need an explanation. You know what they probably were thinking? The dude could finally get a job. <laughs> the, dude, the dude could help us out. The dude is now my son, and now he can help but listen to what took place in verse 20. His parents answered and said to him, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But what means he now sees, we do not know. Or who opened his eyes, we do not know. He is of age, ask him, and he'll speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared of the Jews. For the Jews had already, if anyone confessed that he was Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. In other words, they've already said this stone. If anybody confesses Jesus, you are excommunicated from the church. Now, in our days, we wouldn't think, well, I'll just go to a different church. That's not the way it is. Excommunication from the temple is that you are an outcast of the society. That determined how much money you would make if you would even get a job. More importantly, what they believe, you would be away from God and that your sins could not be atoned for at Passover, so you would be in your sins. And if you die in your sins, you would go to hell. You're kicked out of God's place. And that's what they threaten to people with. If you don't do what I tell you to do, 
I'm just going to kick you out of the synagogue, and you are dying in your sins. I will never let you work. I won't even let you have a uh, spouse. You will be nothing. So the parents said, listen, uh, he, he, he's 21. L let, let him speak for himself. If he gets kicked out, that's a whole lot better than we getting kicked out because they were afraid. Therefore, in verse 23, therefore his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So they again called the man who was blind and said to him, give God the glory. We know that this man is a sinner. Now, how'd they know that? They believed that they knew God, that their God figured out. He lived in a little box, and that box was now open, and they were refusing to believe the unexplainable. This is the time nobody heals a blind man. This only explanation was from God. Listen to what the boy said. He answered and said, whether he is a sinner or not, I like what he says, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, but now I see. I do not know. In other words, I don't care about the unexplainable. I do not know why. I do not know how. I do not have all the answers about when. I do not know. But this one thing I do know, I was blind. But now, I see. Sometimes we have to hold on to the undeniable and say, you know what, I don't know why everything takes place. I don't know about everything. But one thing I know, I was lost in my sin. But Jesus came into my life, and because he came into my life, I am found. I can say, I don't know, but I know what Jesus Christ has done for me. I was blind, but now I see. Verse 26, then they said to him again, what did we do to you? How did he open your eyes? I, the guy said, what? You need to know how. You need to know why. They want to know what, why, how, and when it took place. The fact that I can see isn't good enough for you. The fact that you can see it's undeniable that I was a beggar and I was at the gate for 22 years and now you don't believe that I could see? Do you think I've been faking it for 22 years? He answered them, I told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Then he got sarcastic. Do you want to become one of his disciples? And they got chapped. <laughs> they got mad. They say, they say, then they reviled him. What that means is they started throwing insults at him. They treated him better at the beggar at the gate than they did right now as a healed individual. They reviled him. They insulted him. They hurled insults at him. They were nicer to him when he had no conflict. And he said, you are his disciples, but we are Moses' disciples. We know what God spoke to Moses, for as, the, as this fellow, we do not know where he is from. Since we didn't know the answers, he couldn't explain it, it could not be true. Since we can't explain it, it must not be true. And what this guy is saying, I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know how. All I know is just a few hours ago, I was blind. Do I understand it? No. Can I explain it? No. I neither can deny it because it is undeniable what Jesus Christ can do. Let's listen to how this finishes in 30 through 34. The man answered and said to them, why this is a marvelous thing that you do not know where he is from, yet he has opened my eyes. Now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God, he does as his will, he hears him. Since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. And the answer is said to him, you were completely born in sin and are teaching us, and they cast him out. They excommunicate him. Because somebody that had a testimony of what Jesus Christ did within his life stood up and said, I don't know what you think. 
I know that he was a prophet. He was the son of God. He came down. No one has ever touched me like that. Nobody's ever done this for me. I know he touched me, and I know he saved me. He gave my eyesight back, and they didn't understand it. They insulted him. They got mad at him, and they kicked him out of the temple. He was excommunicated. He was a nobody after he had no eyes. But listen to what Jesus did in verse 35. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found them, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? In verse 36, he answered and said, Who is he? Lord, that I may believe in him. You know, right here, the beggar didn't have questions. Why did you put mud on my eyes? Where did you come from? Why did you choose me? But all he knew is once I was blind and now I see. I'll follow you, whatever you ask. Verse 37, and Jesus said to him, you have both seen him and he is talking to you right now. You have just seen Jesus and you're talking to him right now. Then he said, Lord, I believe. He didn't say, Lord, there's a lot of questions, a lot of things that I cannot explain. They're unexplainable. And before I will follow, I have to explain. I have to know. I need to get into the Bible. I want you to tell me everything. Why, why, why? He said in verse 38, Lord, I believe. And then what did he do? He worshiped. For 20 years, couldn't see anything, was spat on. He's a beggar. Made an encounter with Jesus. Jesus changed his life. He was cast out of the religious system of the day. Said, you know what? You don't fit into our box. Your defining moment, not good enough for us. If you can't explain it, we're not going to accept it. You being undeniably healed isn't good enough. I'm going to kick you out of the church. You got things going on in your life. The church, we're kicking you out. But guess what Jesus does? Jesus isn't part of the synagogue. Jesus went to find him. And he says, do you want to know who the Son of Man is? Yes. It is I. And he saw him. And he talked to him. And you know what the guy did? Believed and worshiped. There's a lot of times where undeniable things take place. There's a lot of times where when we deal with hurt and pain that I could say, I have a lot of doubts. I have a lot of doubts. But I can also say I have so many, so many times where God undeniably took care of my life and, and worked in somebody's life. What do you do when you don't know what to do? What do you do when you get a phone call and you're going to the hospital and you know somebody just died and you are going into their life and you don't have the answers? What do you do when these baby dies? What do you do when a husband dies? What do you do when your child has just found out she's pregnant or, or he's on crack cocaine? And they call you up and they say, I want you to come in and you say, I don't know. I don't have the answer. I, I don't know what to say. You know what you have to do? Is you have to get to that seat and know undeniably that you are the tool that God is going to use to help somebody in their life. God wanted to use this young man. Who sinned his father's mother? Oh, no, no, no. I'm having him at this spot, at this time, so I can be used of God. In your self-defining moment, what is it that you can say, I don't know everything. I don't know why everything took place. But this one thing I know is undeniable. I know that Jesus loves me. I know that he died for me. 
because I know when I needed him the most, he wrapped his arms around me and he took care of me and he saved me. I once was blind, but now I see. I once, once had many doubts and I was so focused on everything I didn't know. I focused on that. I said, I have doubts, I have doubts, I have doubts, I have doubts. But somehow, because I was alone or because of a sermon or because of a song, something came into my life and then I realized Jesus is the Lord. Jesus did come to this earth. Jesus did die on the cross. Jesus did raise from the dead. And I have faith in him. And now, personally, I was a sinner. And now I am saved. I was blind, but now I can see. And I have a job. And my job is to cause people to see the undeniable change within my life. Undeniable. It was easy. Once I was without Christ, Jesus came into my life. It changed who I am. Now I can see. Now I can live. Now I can be who Jesus wants me to be. When somebody looks at your life, do they say, hmm, I wonder if something happened. I don't understand it. Or when they look at your life, can they say, wow, that is undeniable. Jesus changed his life. Our churches need to have undeniable Christians that will stand up and say, I don't know what happened. All I know is once I was blind, my eyes were open, and now I can see, and I am not ashamed to say, to do, or to be who God wants me to be. If our church can have that power, if our church will stand up and say, it is undeniable, I am not afraid, I do not care, I will be cast out, I'll be ridiculed, I'll be laughed at, I don't care. Because my Lord and my Savior passed by my way and he said, do you want to know who the Son of Man is? And I said, yes. I fell on my face and I worshiped him. I know without a doubt that Jesus is my Lord and he is my Savior. It's undeniable. Do I know everything? Absolutely not. Can I explain everything? Nope. Don't even want to. Don't even care. This one thing. I was blind. But now I see. That's all I care. I want to see Jesus face to face. Let's bow our heads. Dear Father. We love you. We thank you. We thank you for what you've done for our lives. Lord, we thank you for John chapter 9. That a story of a blind man that was ridiculed, laughed at, right after you healed him. And that so tells us what our life can be like. And we need your hope and we need your help and we need your, your help in our life. So, Lord, be with us in this invitation today. Be with our hearts. Allow us to be self-aware. Allow us to be following you in this decision. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. I want to have my, one of the most important decisions within your life. And I think this decision that you may change the way that you look at God. Are you embarrassed of your faith? Are there times when somebody says, are you a Christian that you would say, I go to church? There's a time where I was a child and I gave my life to Christ, but I really don't see anything. They would not look at you and say, it's undeniable that you are a follower after Christ. I want to ask you to ask God for courage, strength. Be not ashamed. I think there's times that we need to stand up and say, I am part of the family of God and I'm not embarrassed. But there are some of you, there are some of you that says, I have never been in this chair where Jesus has touched my life. I've heard about it. 
I've heard about Jesus. I've heard the songs about Jesus, but I have never accepted him as my Lord. I am still blind, and I am still in my sin, and I have no hope with Jesus. Today is the day that Jesus wants to come into your life, and he wants to touch you. He wants to open your eyes spiritually, and he wants to forgive you of your sins. He wants to give to you the hope of eternity. Jesus did die on that cross. Jesus did raise from the grave. Jesus did take you with him. Your sins are forgiven. And when you accept him, they are gone. Wiped clean. He wants to write your name on the Lamb's book of life. Will you please accept him? You can be undeniably saved. You may not know everything. You may not see everything instantaneously. But you can know that from this day on, my eyes are open and I can see I once was lost, but now I'm found because Jesus came into my life.